Don't look at these instruments. I'm not even going to use all this stuff. Hi, I'm Dr. Portia James. I'm an oral and maxillofacial surgeon in Frisco, Texas. And I'm the owner of About Face Oral and Facial Surgery. I mean, if you had a mirror right here and just let me watch. Oh you my, you say you'll be fine. <laughs> I'm going to show you my practice and see what I do. Come on inside. All right. So when a patient comes, we get a consultation first. So they'll head to the consultation room here. So as far as what I do, if I'm in the clinic, um, it, will be cons it will consist of things such as doing um, wisdom teeth extractions, I will do sedations, um, I will do dental implants or possibly even a biopsy. And we'll kind of discuss things, we'll discuss any um, what's going on, we might get x-rays, um, and things like that. Well, uh, first of all, we will go through their medical history, determine you know their chief complaint, what brought them here, what's been going on, and kind of see what we need to do. After that, we will get X-rays on them. So you know you have to approach them a little bit differently, especially when you're doing oral surgery. We're like um, because it's such an intimate interaction between the doctor and the patient. We're literally right here on each other. So. People, when they come to see me, they're super scared, they're terrified. Um, most want to be asleep for what we do. So I guess that's a kind of a caveat about what we do. We're like one of the only specialties um, that will administer anesthesia and provide the surgery as well. This is our cone beam CT scanner. It is, it creates 3D views on the jaw or actually the skull it goes from under the orbits all the way down to the lower jaw so if they need like a 3d x-ray we will do that so i actually went to to dental school at meharry medical college in nashville tennessee from there my path was a little bit different so instead of going straight to residency i actually practiced as a general dentist in the u.s air force for four years. So I did a, a general, uh, what's called an advanced education in general dentistry there. And then I did uh, three additional years after that as a practicing general dentist where I was actually stationed overseas for two years in England. So that was kind of my path. And then after that, once I was in that final year um, of my four year tour, I got accepted into a civilian program and I actually went back to Meharry Medical College in Nashville and I did my four-year surgical residency in oral and maxillofacial surgery. And so, and then we'll see them again and kind of talk to them um, in the consult room about what their needs are, what the surgical plan is, um, and if they want to be awake, asleep, most people want to be asleep for what they're getting done if we're gonna be doing an outpatient procedure. Um, so from there, then they go into the treatment planning room, which they will talk to our treatment plan coordinator and they will go through their insurance and, and talk about you know what the insurance would cost or what the insurance will pay and what their out-of-pocket cost is from there. So let's say after that is done, then we will go into treatment. Yeah, I'm an Air Force girl. I'm a, I, my, both of my parents are retired military. My mom's retired from the Air Force. My dad's retired from the Army. Grandfather's military. I come from a lineage of military people, hence the name about face. Turn around, we're transitioning lives here. We're, we are transitioning lives about face. So we're gonna walk down this way and we're gonna to go to one of our surgical suites. Um, so if we're gonna be doing a procedure or whatnot, today we're just gonna be doing a simple extraction today. How are you? <laughs> Good. Probably all anxious now, huh? So we're going to put this on you. Bring your arm out a little bit more. What pharmacy do you use? Oh, okay. Well, that's easy. To um, put you on antibiotics again, okay. just for the extraction itself, the procedure that we're doing. And what are we doing for you today? Extracting my back molar. On which side? On my right side. 
Okay, the very last <laughs> one, the very last yeah. one on the lower right side. Okay, we got to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Everybody in the room knows what's going on. So worst part about today is the anesthesia injection. That's just going to sting a little. It does. Yeah. I've been through it. I know. <laughs> I know. Actually, it's it's better to the day than it has been in the past. You know, uh -huh. circumstances. So. Ah. Uh, okay. <laughs> so the thing about like when since you had it in that abscess before uh -huh. today should be a little bit better um okay. because like when you have an abscess it's kind of um sometimes it's a little bit harder to get you numb okay because of an infected state but it doesn't look infected no 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 i'm saying previously oh okay if okay. we would have done this like a week or two ago uh -huh. it would have been much different so don't look at these instruments i'm not even going to use all this stuff it doesn't really bother me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> I mean, if you had a mirror right here and just let me watch. Oh, my, you say you'll be fine. <laughs> People forget, you know, when, when you have a toothache or when you have some kind of irritation that's going on inside of the tooth, like it gets inside of the nerve of the tooth. So if you get bacteria on the inside of the tooth, it basically goes through the roots and it goes out. If it goes out this way, you know, on the outside, then you have just facial swelling. But if it goes on the inside underneath there, or like if it starts impinging upon your airway, that's when you have a major issue. So any kind of, um, you know, an abscess or whatnot, if it goes into your airway space, that's very, very dangerous. Okay. Yes, you can. Deep breath for me. I'm sorry. Hang in there. I'm going to put these awesome sunglasses on you. Okay. So you're going to be, once you get a little bit more numb, then I'll give you the rest of it. But I don't want to. Um, as long as it takes for them. Some people take a little bit longer than others. Um, but generally it takes about two to three minutes or so for the to start and it and it depends on what medicine that we give him will determine how long it's going to last so for example most people will use what's called lidocaine and so lidocaine will typically last about two hours or so so afterwards um as far as instructions um you're going to give you a baggie you're going to get plenty of gauze to take home these next few days you're gonna be on straight, soft things, mashed potatoes, pudding, oh, insure yeah, oh. boost, <laughs> that's what things like that. Uh, Nothing that's, that's, you're not gonna be able to eat hard and crunchy stuff for a little while. So with the, the medications that you're given, with that coating, I want you to alternate it with ibuprofen. Um, you're gonna have some stitches. The stitches are gonna dissolve in about three to five days. Um, so, and they actually don't necessarily dissolve like, but they kind of loosen up. So you'll feel a string hanging and you don't have to call me about it. Just pull it because it, it's supposed to do that. Okay. Um, we talked about food, no straws. You're gonna have an ice pack to take home. I want you to use that ice pack 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, okay? Um, but other than that, everything, what we're doing today is pretty routine. Um, first three days is the worst. That's when you have the most of the swelling. Everybody always will ask me, like, can you take this tooth out? I'm like, uh, well, I don't think I could have finished my training without being able to take the most, the most simple thing of oral and maxillofacial right. surgery. So, but yeah, I mean, there's different ways that we can get those out. I've never had to put my knee on anybody's <laughs> chest. I remember when I was... That's what people tell me. Yeah, right. Some advice for an inspiring dental student that wants to become an oral and maxillofacial surgeon, I will tell them that they have to be very dedicated. They have to work hard. They can't be scared of sleepless nights. Because being, you're on call a lot during, a, I guess, any surgical residency, honestly. So you have to be a, a go-getter. Uh, and you, of course, you have to have the grades to match that because uh, historically speaking, oral and maxillofacial surgeons are typically at the top tier of their classes because you have to have that, that academic background because of everything that we have to do. So I would tell them to work hard, get their grades up, um, I would tell them to do externships um, when they have a break. 
So like if they're on spring break, winter break, and things like that, they need to be externing somewhere at a hospital so that they can really they can really see what we do and get just a, a glimpse of it um, to see that it's it's beyond just taking out teeth and placing implants, but we're literally working on the whole body sometimes, especially if you're doing like a, a big reconstructive case because we're gonna be taking bone from the femur or from the hip or something like that. If we have to do a resection of the jaw, that, that jaw has to come from somewhere on the body. So do externships, keep your grades up, participate in various extracurricular activities or leadership positions as well, so that you can kind of beef up your CV and make yourself a better candidate for a residency. So what, um, what we're gonna do, um, make sure you get scheduled for a follow-up. Okay. Um, so this tooth right here, mm -hmm. these are where the teeth is, so it has a, a I don't know if you see that shadow right mm -hmm. there. It has some decay there. Okay. So that's why that piece of that filling popped off where that decay is. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I said, let Dr. Taylor look at you yeah, afterwards. I need to, um, but other than that, we're just seeing for a follow up um, in about a week. Okay. 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 We'll, well, we'll see you and see how you're doing. Don't get a cleaning or anything right now because you don't want anything while you're open. No, I'll wait until. So in about um, about 45 minutes to an hour, I want you to change that gauze out. You just need one, just fold it up and put it in that spot. Okay. Um, you'll, you, you're you oozing a little bit. That's why I put that medicine inside of it to help form a blood clot. Um, so just keep biting down on gauze. Okay. Um, if you run out of gauze, you can get more or whatnot, but or otherwise tea bag, tea bag. Tea bag. Mm -hmm. All right. It helps. Okay. Gotcha. We'll see you in about a week. <laughs> Do room temperature or cold? Okay. Cold is good. I know in the past they said that. Mm -hmm. And you have the ice pack in there too. I want you to 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. So that's what we do. Um, so that was one patient that we saw, did an extraction on him, um, surgical extraction, stitched him up. We'll see him back in a week, see how he does. So um, my practice is about face, oral and facial surgery. We're located in Frisco, Texas. We're off of 423 in El Dorado in Frisco, Texas. Uh, a lot of the things that we do are in the clinical setting, um, not in the hospital, but in the clinic is um, things such as wisdom teeth, dental implants, um, sedation. We'll do some aesthetic things on the face, such as um, Botox fillers and things like that um, for facial rejuvenation. So that's what we do.